Good morning, third grade. We are on 9.6 today, and we are doing modeling equivalent fractions. And our central question is, how can you use models to find equivalent fractions? And we are going to use a model today of a piece of paper. So if you have just a blank piece of copy paper, you can go get one. And you are going to need either a crayon or a colored pencil. And we are going to make two, actually three sets of equivalent fractions. Two or more fractions that name the same amount are called equivalent fractions. You can use a sheet of paper to model fractions equivalent to one half. Now, it says first fold a sheet of paper into two equal parts and open the paper and count the parts. So, if I take my sheet of paper and I fold it in two and I open it, I have one, two parts. So I have one half here and one half here. There are two equal parts. Each part is half of the paper. Then it says shade one of the halves, write one half on each of the halves. So I shaded one half red and put one half and left the other one white and put one half. Then it says next fold the paper in half two times. Open the paper. So remember, we have to fold it twice. This is once, and this is twice. So you're gonna fold it hot dog and then Hamburg style. Then you're gonna open it up, and now there are one, two, three, four equal parts. So now there are four equal parts. Each part is one fourth of the paper. Write one fourth on each of the fourths. So one fourth here, one fourth here, one fourth here, and one fourth here. Then it says, look at the shaded parts. One half equals how many fourths? Well, this is one half. How many fourths? One, two. So one half equals two fourths. Last, fold the paper in half three times. So this is once. This is twice, and one more hot dog fold makes three times. Now we have to open it up and count how many equal parts there are. This time there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight equal parts. Each part is one eighth of the paper. Write one eighth on each of the eighths. So we have to write one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth one eighth, one eighth, one eighth. Find the fractions equivalent to one half on your paper. So one half and two fourths are equivalent. One half and two fourths and one, two, three, Four eighths are equivalent. Four eighths. 
four eighths. Let's look at that again. One half and two fourths are equivalent. And then one, two, three, four eighths are equivalent. Under drawing conclusions, it says explain how many one eighth parts are equivalent to one fourth part on your paper. So we got to look at our one fourth section, which is this one. They want to know how many eighths are equivalent to it. Looking at our one fourth section, how many one eighths are equivalent to it? Two. Two one eighths are equal to one fourth or one fourth equals two eighths. Now on number two, it says analyze. What do you notice about how the numerators changed for the shaded part as you folded the paper? Well, let's look at our numerators. Our numerators are the top numbers. In the first fold, they were one. In the second fold, they were still one. In the third fold, they are still one. So back to the question, what do you notice about how the numerators changed for the shaded part as you fold the paper? No change. Stay one. What does this tell you about the change in the number of parts? Well, the number of parts goes up How did the denominators change for the shaded part as you folded? Well, our first fold, the denominator was a two. The second fold, our denominator was a four. And our third fold, the denominator was an eight. So I'm gonna write, how did the denominators change for the shaded parts? They, increased or went up by two each time. What does this tell you about the change in the size of the parts? So as the number gets bigger parts get smaller. Now under making connections it says you can use a number line to find equivalent fractions. Find a fraction equivalent to two-thirds. Well, there's one-third and there's two-thirds. There's one-six, two-six. There's zero-six, one-six, two-six. Three, six, and four sixth. So 
one third is equal to two sixths, two thirds is equal to four sixths, five sixths, and three thirds is equal to six sixths. Now draw a point on the number line to represent two thirds. There's two thirds. Use fraction strips to divide the number line into sixth. At the end of each strip, draw a mark on the number line and label the marks to show the sixth. Zero six, one six, two six, three six, four six, five six, six six. Identify the fraction that names the same point as two thirds. Two thirds and four sixths share the same point. So two thirds is equal to four six. Now let's do share and show together. Shade the model, then divide the pieces to find the equivalent fraction. One fourth equals And we have to make it an eight, shade the shade first, my one fourth section. And then it says divide the pieces to find the equivalent fraction. I have to make it eights. So if I draw it to make eights, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I have to figure out how many eights equal one fourth, one, two. Two eighths. Now our next one is two thirds. One third and two thirds. So I'm gonna shade two thirds. And then I've got to make my thirds into sixes. So I'm going to divide them equally. Just like that. Now I have to count how many sixes are in two thirds. Well, there's my two thirds. So one, two, three, four sixes are in two thirds. The next one says use the number line to find the equivalent fraction. One half equals three six. They're sharing the same point. Three fourths equals how many eighths? There's the dot for three fourths equals six eighths. Number five says one half equals how many eighths? One half shares this point with four eighths. Number six says three thirds equals, so I go all the way down to three thirds and that equals six six. Now my right math says explain why two two or two halves equals one. Write another fraction that is equivalent to one. I'm writing three, three, that's equivalent to one. And then it says draw to justify your answer. I'm gonna draw a pie because I like pies. And I'm gonna draw three equal parts to my pie. One, two, three. And if I shade in all three parts, I've shaded in one whole pie. Now, on the back, it says connect to reading. You can summarize the information in a problem by underlining it or writing the information needed to answer a question. Read the problem and underline the important information. We'll go over this tomorrow with lesson nine seven. I want you to read through this and go through the steps and I'll go over it tomorrow. Also, do your practice book 9.6 for today. Thank you.